My morning starts with a morning swim, irrespective of where I am on the coastline. The, the, the ritual of swimming goes back a long way in Fisher. I can't really track it, but there are some folk who have been swimming here for more than 25 years, and they come down whether there is rain, snow, or whatever. Fisher Beach is the beach of choice when it comes to swimming, and it's the beach of choice for families. So, early in the morning, sometimes, as early as half past six, but in winter, certainly around about by eight o'clock, I will be in the water, and I use the water, or I use the experience to exercise and basically catch a wake up. I'm missing you coming to swim. It's been 12 this morning. Sometimes people are walking past and they say, oh, hi Terry. Hi, 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 Joe. Hi, Al. Hi, Al. <laughs> no, it's too wonderful. And if I don't have my swim, it's not the same. It's not the same if you don't have your swim in the morning. Besides, yes, besides the discipline, it's a therapy for me. I, I often say that, that after my swim, the world can throw anything at me and I can take it. And the morning you don't swim, I think Rose can corroborate that. <laughs> You miss it. There's something missing. And water being a natural element, it, it affects one's soul, which in turn is part of your whole philosophy of life. All your troubles you can speak to yourself in the water yes, about I, I, I used to flippantly, <laughs> by Dennis, I used to flippantly joke about it and say that I get into the water to wash my sins away. So, <laughs> I think that is about all. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are like an extended family. We frolic in the sea. We choose thereafter to drink coffee instead of tea. Herman is one of us, sporting jeans and sheriff's badge, joining in the banter that starts the day for us. And half the, all the, everyone who doesn't swim thinks we're all crazy. But um, they're missing something. It's paid for, Mark. <laughs> this group here that you met this morning is definitely a, what you might call a hardcore group who literally swim year round. Most of us swim, but there are there's a couple of people that don't swim. They come they, down, but just they to to join in yeah. with the chat. I have a routine in that I, I go up to a coffee shop, which is our information point, and have a cup of coffee. Daar kom die haai, die vrees van die baai. Jy kan nie gaan swem nie, die fluikie het gekraai. Die viste manne raas, hulle sê vir die baas, ons maak hulle waai vir die vreeslike haai. En nou my raai, so hard so sy traai, sy kan nie weg swem nie, sy is in haar maai. Die haai sy tange is so skep so sy mes, Ach, maar die ding is a feestelike spes. Ons swem in vlak water vir die rest van ons daar. Wat helpt het nou om te klaar? Oeh, die haai. <laughs> My name is Alan Lindner and I manage a whale of a heritage route. And the route is located between Strandfontein and Cape Point on the west shore of False Bay. The purpose of the route is to create 
a destination where folk can visit and watch whales in season, which is primarily from May until November, but the peak is August, September. We have about 120 spotters. Um, this project's deep into the community. So that's where we are today. I come from a, a strategy background. I'm not a tour guide. I'm not a registered trainer, lecturer, educator or anything like that. I'm a marketer. I'm a strategist by trade. And the whole emphasis is to use heritage or history. The bottom line here is that there are many retailers or businesses, so we use the whales and the heritage to promote the retailers. There was no system in place to say, hey, we've got whales in False Bay. You don't have to go to, for instance, Hermanus to see a whale. I thought, well, let's find a brand name for this thing. And I put it out to some friends and they came back and they said, it's got to be a whale of a heritage route. And that is the, the underlying rationale behind the whole project. There's page one of the whale log. We've had a, 103 reports, of which 35 are out, outside False Bay. Here in South Africa, we have the largest population of southern right whales in the world. Our population is also very convenient, it's distributed and it's very close to metropolitan areas. But they only received protection in 1935. By 1970s, protection became complete with the introduction of the International Observer Scheme. And since then, the population has been increasing annually at 7%. In other words, doubling every 10 years. So it's now reached 20% of its original numbers. I suspect, Moz, that there's a whale out there. There's something breaking the surface there. Almost certain that's a whale. What we're really seeing here now is the, um, the winter destination of southern right whales who come up from the Antarctic uh, in around about late May, early June and then hang around in our bays where they, most of the adult females will give birth. Some of the morning swimmers in Fishhook are whale spotters. That just happens, I think, to be a coincidence. But some of them are pretty sharp and they're on the ball and they are very keen to be part of, of the system. Every time I see a whale, if, if I'm not near my computer, I would always SMS Alan. And then sometimes I'm not sure what, if I'm, how many there are or what kind of whales there are. And then usually if, um, if Alan wants to know, then he can SMS other spotters and ask if they can see it or just advise them and then they would look as well, which he does to me as well when he, um, somebody else has seen a whale that I haven't seen yet and then he'll um, just tell me, and then we confirm each other's viewings. We've got a message here, and let's see what's on it. Yeah, this is from Lorraine. They counted 13 pods, but this is the sort of report that I, I start receiving now. I'm on the ground a lot, and that's how I pick up what's going on with my customers, what's happening with the retail sector, um, because they basically fund this whole initiative. How many hours do you spend just doing this? At least three hours a day. It's an expensive hobby. Alan's trying to bring a bit of publicity and um, tourism into False Bay because False Bay seems to be neglected um, as, um, or not recognised as a whale spotting area. It would be nice if people would come here, you know, if there are lots of whales. Especially if you know what time of the year the whales are here. They're all fired up about whales. That's the common denominator here. So if we can appreciate whales close up, and uh, according to the message we received from them yesterday, they boast 13 pods and I think there's eight calves. Um, well, what a pleasure.